our first reading on this third Mass of Christmas Day comes from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, last of all in these days has spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the world, who being the brightness of His glory and the figure of His substance, and upholding all things by the word of His power, making purgation of sins, sits on the right hand of the Majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath inherited a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels has he said at any time, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God adore him. And to the angels indeed he said, He that maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the Son, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of justice is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved justice and hated iniquity. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above all thy fellows. And thou in the beginning, O Lord, didst found the earth, and the works of thy hands are the heavens. They shall perish, but thou shalt continue, and they shall all grow old as a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the self same, and thy years shall not fail. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was made nothing that was made. In Him was life, and the light, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came as a witness, to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was to bear witness to the light. That was the true light which enlighteneth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. To them that believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the Word, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the angel Gabriel brought that Word to the Virgin Mary. Will you give God a human nature? Will you give God blood? Will you give God the antidote to the sins of all mankind? Will you do it, dear Mother? And she who was a virgin cried out, 
fiat voluntas sua, thy will be done. And so we too turn to our Blessed Mother and ask her to give us the dew of the Holy Spirit to understand the Word of God and to live according to that truth. And let us pray together as her children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Did you know that every Christmas the priest is asked to offer three Masses? There are only two times in the year where we have the opportunity to offer three Masses. And there is a purpose for this. First Mass at midnight. The birth of God the Son from all eternity. The eternal love of the Father for the Son, His Word. That's the first birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a birth in eternity. The second is the second Mass. And this is the Mass in which our Lord Jesus Christ takes upon a human nature because the Virgin Mary said, Thy will be done. Hence, the conception by perception. Now, we are in the third Mass. And now the priest must remember that there is a third birth of Christ. It is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ in your hearts and my heart. We have a womb. And that womb is our heart. How do we understand the heart? It is the union of the mind, the intellect, with the will. That is the heart. The mind hears the truth. The truth opens the will, and the will grasps the truth and puts the truth into action. This is why we say, when we are educating you in regards to the faith, when you capture an idea that you'd never thought about before, all of a sudden the light comes on, and you say... I must change my life to conform to the life of Christ. And your will takes you there. It accepts the truth and then incarnates the truth in your life. That is why you say, I used to be this way. I now see that that way is wrong. That way does not lead me to heaven. I change and begin to follow the light of Christ. This is why confession is so powerful. Because it opens us up to the mystery of our sinfulness. And this sinfulness has to have an antidote. We cannot get to the kingdom of heaven with anything that is dirty. When we look outside, we say we just are so happy to have a white Christmas. Not many are having it this year, but we have it up here. A white Christmas to indicate something about the Catholic faith. We must enter into purity. Purity of heart, mind, and soul. In order that we might bring this innocence and this purity to Almighty God. A good friend of mine from Arizona, a Hungarian, an escapee from Hungary when the communists took over, sent me a story. A story that really indicates what is taking place when the gospel is written today by St. John, who says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was testified by John, testified to the light that comes to each and every one of us. It happened that certain teachers were kicked out of the Catholic schools in order that other teachers who would come in would destroy in the minds and hearts of the girls there the knowledge of God. Making science God. Making sure that every one of those girls realize the only thing that is true is what you can see, taste, touch, hear. Anything that the senses take in, that can be true. But anything that you cannot see certainly cannot be true. Well, Gertrude was the teacher. And this good Catholic girl, Angela, knew that they were having this battle. And she was only a ten-year-old girl, but she went to Father Norbert, who later testifies to this story. And Father Norbert heard her desire. Father, I want to receive Holy Communion every day, so that I might be able to hold on to my faith and defend my faith against a woman against my own teacher. 
So Father Norbert accepted the little girl's request, and daily she would come for Holy Communion. Now, the tile, the exchange between Angela and the Gertrude, the teacher, became more and more sharp, more and more divided. So, Miss Gertrude decided, I will really give it to him today. At that day, Angela seemed to know it, and she went to Father and said, Please give me an extra special blessing, Father. I need God's help today. When she came into the classroom, all the girls were there, and the teacher began teaching. As she began teaching, she says, Angela, please, get up and go outside the classroom. I need to explain something to the girls. So Angela gets up in obedience and goes outside the door. Now, class, all of you say with me, Angela, please come in. So the class cried out, Angela, please come in. The door opened and in walked the young lady. Angela was standing there wondering what was going to take place when all of a sudden Gertrude said, Look, dear class, you called and Angela obeyed, came in. Now, you realize that she can do that because she has ears, she hears the call. This is what is true, that anything we can see, touch, taste, hear, that makes us act. Well, how many here believe in Jesus? The hands went up. We believe in Jesus. Well, then, call him and ask him to come in. And all the kids were going, huh? And Angela all of a sudden got it. She walked up to the front of the room and she says, Come on, girls, say with me. Infant Jesus, come in. Come in, infant Jesus. And they began this chorus. Come in, infant Jesus. Gertrude didn't expect this. All these girls crying out, Come in, Lord Jesus! Come, Lord Jesus! And all of a sudden, at the door, a brilliant light began to appear. The girls watched this light move right to the front of the room, right in the middle of the room, when all of a sudden, there was a gold, a golden globe that opened up like a tabernacle door. And there the girls saw a majestic little baby. A majestic little baby. The infant of Prague. Standing there with his hands open, shining radiantly. And the girls were just wrapped in wonder and love that this day, December 16th, 1956, they would never forget it in their life. Well, our Lord blessed them. And then began to move out to the door and all things faded away. Gertrude began to cry out, He came! He came! Ran out of the classroom crying out, He came! He came! Where is she today? She's in a nut house. She's in an insane asylum because she could not understand that the light of Christ was there to take away the darkness of her socialism, her communism, her materialism. You and I are in the same situation. We cry out, Lord Jesus, come. Come to me in my darkness. Come to me in the situation of my life that I can't handle. Come to me and give me your light. Our Lord comes into the darkness and we must begin to realize He is the light. He leads us to the path of His Father, to the love of His Father. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is Logos, the divine Logos, the eternal Word of God. And this Word of God, the Logos, in the Greek, gives us each and every day a rhema. The rhema is a day from God, a day in which He speaks a word to you. Every Christmas, we are asked to understand this word. One couple, Helmut and Elisa, they understood the word. They were living in East Germany. Now, East Germany was blocked off by a wall, and there were a whole area of bombs and things, rocks and stuff that would keep people from escaping from East Germany and going over to the freedom of West Germany. That was the way it was. You and I, who have lived a little longer, know these things. 
Well, Helmut realized that they had their child, their little baby, on Christmas Day. And he says, I don't want my child to live under communism. I don't want this little boy to experience the slavery and the fear and the terror of tyranny. He said to Elsa, Elsa, we have to escape. They planned their escape. Friends on the other side gave him the directions on how to get to the wall where it was broken down. They got to the place right there, the the last building, before they had to make their run for it. They had time, the, the sights of the lights that were coming through, sweeping through the area. They heard the dogs that were crying, barking. They knew that if those dogs picked up their scent, they would be torn to pieces. But Elsa had the little child. And Helmut said, the time is now. And they began to go. He was leading his wife across when all of a sudden the light came and they were spotted. The siren sounded, the dogs were let loose, and Helmut thought, I'll hide and protect my wife and my child. And he just bent right over them. As he did so, all of a sudden, Elsa saw a woman, a beautiful woman, bright as light, holding a babe. And this woman said, hold, don't move. The guards came out, the dogs came out, they were all around them, but they didn't touch them. And one of the guards cried out, I saw a family, I did see a family. You're blind. The other one cried out, the dogs can't find them, we can't find them, there is nothing here. And they began to go away. And the lady guided them all the way to the spot. That very spot where the friends of Helmut were waiting. And Helmut lifted over his baby. Then lifted over Elsa. And then himself crawled over. And as he did so, the mother of God went her way. We have these miracles that change our life. And the greatest miracle is when we come to the light of our Lord Jesus Christ and we follow Him and we follow His mother. That is why we have that great saying, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, love you. Save my soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I love you. Save my soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, may I breathe forth my soul in peace with you. We are here in 2015. We're asking the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, help our families. Help us to grow in holiness that we may one day be joined together with you for all eternity in the kingdom of light. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.